In this video, we're going to be setting up our database and we're going to be using code first entity framework and we'll create our first migration. What we'll do is we're going to go and create a brand new web application and we're going to store all our database stuff in there and break it all into its own piece pieces. And we'll get into that in a second. And then we'll create a DB contacts. We'll configure our startup class. In these videos, we're going to be using SQLite for our database. And then towards the end, we'll create a migration and check the database, make sure our tables are in there. Now, all these URLs I have up here, I'll have down in the description like usual. You could just find them down there if you don't want to search for it. And then also, I'll have the code that I'm creating in this video. I'll have it as snippets as in the description. There's going to be a snippet link. You just click on that and you'll end up on that page. And then you can just copy and paste it right in your project. Let's go start off create, creating a brand new web application for our database stuff. We'll do that right now. Now we need to find a spot within our project to put our database stuff. And it is common to store your database stuff within your project. Uh, that is done a lot. So for example, we could uh, just create a new folder and throw like a data folder in here. Then we could also have an entities folder and all that, all that stuff, have our DB contacts in our data folder. Uh, however, though, this could get pretty cluttery real fast having everything in here. So what I'm going to do is just break it out into its own project or its own folder. Let's go and get rid of this. And then uh, we'll go and we'll create a brand new web application. So what I'm after is a empty web application. And .NET has a whole, whole bunch of different uh, projects. So let's go and just check them out, .NET. Like a bunch of different boilerplates. So if we hit new. And then like for example here looks like a uh, ideal application we could use. Uh, where did I see that? Right here, web. This will give us a empty .NET Core empty project uh, web. So that's what we'll use in this video. So CLS to clear everything out. And then within the main folder, not the API, we're going to have this on the outside of the API. So within this folder, we'll go and add a new project. So .NET new, new, and then what uh, application we want, and that's going to be web. And then uh, what's the name? And I'll, I guess I'll call this, uh, well, I'm going to call it DAL, Data Access Layer. So we'll keep it the same, like CI, then at the end, DAL. And this is actually pretty common. Uh, and if you ever see that out in the field, it's, it means Data Access Layer. So hit Enter. This should create as a new application. Here it is. Now, a lot of the things in here I, I'm not going to need. I'm just going to get rid of it like this. Don't need. And that, just delete this. What I'm really after is just this one project file. That's all I want and get rid of these. And then uh, now let's go and open this up. We'll edit this and close this and close this. And then we'll just tweak this. We don't need this web here. You get rid of that. And then also don't need this and that's it. So you want your project file looking like this. And now we need to go and tell our API that this DAO out here exists. Let's go and in, into our API from the command line and we'll, we'll add this reference right away. Open up the command line. And then what you want to do is navigate into your API. So CD CI dot API and then dot net add reference. And then the name of the project, and that is ci.dal. Then hit enter. All right, so if we go into the API and check out the, this, and you can tell this has changed. And we'll open this, and then here it is. Here's our new project. Now that we have a place to put all our database stuff, now we can create our DB context. And let's go and check out the documentation on that. They have really good documentation on how to set that up in your application. And what we'll do is we'll copy and paste a lot of that into our project. So let's check that out now. Here at the documentation, I found a really good link. And this shows you how you can set up your DB contacts. Now it shows you different ways you can configure your DB contacts. Now the way I'm going to do it is right here. This is perfect. I'm going to just create a DB context. Now you can pull your database in through here. I'm going to actually do it through the startup class, but uh, this is perfect. Now, actually, I could just copy this part here. I don't have to copy the whole thing. Let's go and create a brand new DB context. If we go back to our application within our data access layer now, we'll go and create a new class, so new class. I'm going to call it application DB context. Con 
text. All right, hit enter. All right, and then I'm just gonna throw in our code within there, clean it up a little bit, tab and tab. Okay, so now we need to configure it, of course, so we don't want blogging context, we want application DB context. Throw that in there, that's our constructor, and then throw it in there as well. And then uh, we're getting these errors because it needs to derive from DB context. Now this is gonna get changed pretty soon. Uh, let's go back to here. Like this, I'm gonna be using identity DB context instead in a couple of videos. But for now, just to get us started where, we, where you could do migrations and things like that, we'll just use this for now. But keep in mind, we're gonna be changing that. If we go back here, and then we need to pull that in from identity framework core, there it is. All right, that should get rid of all the errors. Then we need to create our values uh, entity. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter that in here and change the name to this. All right, let's go and create our new, our first entity. And we'll put that inside of our data access layer as well. I'll throw a folder in there, we'll call it entities. And then here we'll throw all our entities. So let's create a new class and we'll, we'll call this value. So this is gonna create a table within our da database called value. I'll just throw a couple properties in here. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna be deleting this in a couple of videos, but um, I'll create like an ID and then this one be like name. So string name, name. Okay, and then save that. We can close that down. We're not gonna be back in here anytime soon. And then now our DB context is uh, ready. We just need to pull this in. Now that we have that done, we can save this and then close this down. Now we need to tell our application that uh, this DB context exists. And the way you could do that is uh, go into your startup class and you'll notice a pattern with um, dealing with this application. Whenever you basically do anything, when you pull something in, when you create a new service, you usually tell your startup class about it. You know, you'll, you'll notice that, that pattern every time uh, you're dealing with this application. Now in here is where we're gonna go and tell our application that, hey, we wanna use this application DB context. And again, they have really good documentation on that. Let's go and check that out. Here they show us how we can add our brand new DB context into our application in our startup class. So we'll go into the configure services and we'll just use the add DB context method that they have here. Now there's multiple ways of doing it. Like for here, they're, we're, they're using SQLite, but here, if you click on this, they're using SQL Server. And as you can tell down here, this is a SQL Server connection string. We'll be setting this file up as well, this app setting.json file. But here's a great piece of snippet. So let's just go copy this oh, and make sure you uh, go to SQLite. That's what we're gonna be using throughout the, the, these videos, so SQLite. And then we'll just copy this. Let's go and open up our startup class. Now, if you want to navigate around your files quickly, you can always just hit Control P and then just put in whatever file you're looking for. And that's a quick way to jump around. And then like in the documentation, they were saying the configure service method, put it inside here, paste that. Then I'll just tab this in, tab, tab. And then uh, we want to pull in our application DB context in here that we created. So application DB context as the type. And then we'll pull this in pretty soon, this uh, method. And then actually we pull this in from our data access layer. And then this will have to download from our, for our nuggets. And then here is the configuration file. This is pulling our connection string out of the configuration file. And we'll set that up in a second as well. So default, I'm just gonna change the name to this, the default, then save that. Now let's go and set up our configuration file. So control P and then app settings, JSON, there it is. And then they also show you how to set up this file. If we go back to the documentation and then down here, uh, make sure you're on Visual Studio Code. And I really like the SQLite connection string. It's real short and simple. The SQL server is like pretty long as you can see here. But if we go back here and I'm just gonna copy this yellow uh, snippet, this is really good, copy this. Let's go set up the our app settings file. And I'll just uh, put a comma here and then paste. Make sure I get rid of that extra bracket. Now I'm gonna change this to default like I did here. Copy this, 
Drop them in there, paste that in there. And then you can change the name to the database if you want. I'll call it like app, that'd be good. Keep it short. And that's it for our configuration file. Save that, we close that down. Now we need to go and pull in SQLite. Now I have a couple links for that as well. So I'm gonna show you those links now. We're gonna be using SQLite throughout all the videos. So if you would like to follow along and download it and set it up, you can find it at sqlitebrowser.org. And here is where you can download it. And then after you've done that, then we need to go pull the uh, package into our project. And to do that, I have a link here. You just paste this in your command line and then you'll have SQLite in the project. Let's copy this and we'll go do that now. Open up the uh, command line. And then you wanna make sure you're within the API project and then just paste it, hit enter. Let's go into here and then I'll minimize this and it should be right here. You should have it installed. Okay, so now that we have that set up, now let's go back to our startup class and we will get rid of this error here. Click on this and there it is right there. Okay, great. So now we're ready to do our first migration. Now, if we go back to our documentation or actually our notepad, now that we set up SQL, uh, we included it in the app setting.json file. Now we're going to create our first migration and then we'll go and check the database, make sure that we have it in the database, our values table. And uh, we'll start on that next. Now, if we open up our folders again, now what we want to do when we create our first migration is we want to store all our migration stuff within this data access layer. And there's a way to do that. So let's first just create our migration. So if we go and open up the command line again, let's clear everything. And then we'll go and do our migration by entering in .NET, then EF. Now again, I kind of like to use this as a crutch. Let's say I forget what the commands are. Like I'm not quite sure what they are. You could always just leave it like that and hit enter. And I'll give you a big list of different commands you could use like like if you want to do something to the database or migrations in this case we're going to be doing a migration so it's right here so if you clear it out again so cls and then hit up then just put in oops up again then put in migrations because that was in there and then again if you forget what it, uh, your commands are just hit enter again and give you another list in this case we're doing add so i do it that way i use this uh commands like a crutch if I can't memorize all the different commands. And again, let's clear it up again, and then hit up, up. And then, so what we wanna do is add a migration. Now, if you just do this right here, it would just add the migrations folder right inside of your API. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna move it out into this this folder. I wanna keep all that database stuff out of, out of our API and in our data access layer. And to do that, all you need to do is put slash slash project. And then where do you want to put it? And in this case, it's in the ci.dal. Now this should create a new migrations folder and put it right in here. If I close this up. Okay, and then open this up. And there is our brand new migration folder. And we have a mi migration in there called init, like we called it here. Now that that is done, We'll be checking out these migrations in a couple of videos, actually. Uh, we're gonna be deleting all this and redoing it with identity. Um, and then I'll show you, we'll get into the migrations more in depth then. But now let's go and just update our database. .NET, oops, over here, .NET, and then database, and then update. And also, by the way, if you don't know all the commands, just hit enter like that. And it gives you two options here, update and drop. Uh, we definitely want to up, do an update. So update and hit enter. All right, let's go and open up uh, SQLite, check out our database, make sure we have a values table in there. So here is our database and we have a values table in there now. And if you open that up and we created that that entity and the entity had an ID and a name. So that is great. So we successfully created a migration and we set up our database. Now, if you're wondering where to find this database, you just go to open database and go into your API folder, your CI API, and you'll find that right there. Just click on that and that'll open up your database. 
Now in the next video, we're going to be adding um, some values to this and we're going to be working inside of our values controller. I'm just going to put it all in our values controller for now and we'll retrieve data from this database. We'll be doing that in the next video. So I'll see you then.